Welcome to Geekonomics, everybody. Mark and Brian here with you to talk all things geekdom going on in the world today and the past week. And forever and, and beyond. forever and for always. <laughs> Sad. We're trapped. We don't We're trapped. Stop. We could never leave. All we can do is talk about nerd geek things. Well, how about non-geek things? What do you think about the uh, Super Bowl this Sunday? It's happening. I know. What do you think is going to – I know you know you think the Patriots are going to win, but what do you think the chances of um, – who is he up against? The uh, Jaguars? Close. They played Eagles? them in the champion The, the Eagles. Game. You, what do you think the chance of the Eagles uh, winning it are realistically? They're a very good team. They have very good – But don't you feel squad. they won – they do. Uh, they play the football well. But yeah. They won the championship out of luck because of that one pass. That was pure. Like the other team was celebrating that they were going to win. And talk about the Vikings. Yeah, it was wasn't it the Eagles and the Vikings? Yeah, but the Vikings beat the Saints that way. That's what it was. Yeah. So how did the Eagles win it? They just destroyed the purple team, the Vikings. The purple team, the yes. purple well, eater. That's how you don't. That's how you know teams. You don't really know anything about football, so no, I don't care about football. But yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah, um, it'll be an interesting time. It'll be a good game. It'll be fun. Yeah. So, did you see? I don't make predictions. I don't get in that. I'm not getting that. What are you? You don't like predictions? It's such a bullshit. You're like worse than me. Did you see? Um, I a part of me. I'm not going to watch the game, but I'll probably watch – I always watch the commercials Yeah, because they're funny. Um, and halftime should be good with Justin Timberlake. Ah, pfft, garbage. I'm not going to watch that. His new song is horrible. It's gar- like, I'm like It's like one of the biggest songs in the world right now, but it's terrible. So for my, In my opinion, it's You don't bad. like any – because it's not your kind of music. No, I don't like Justin Timberlake. That's I mean, fine. I like him as a person. That's fine. I think it's funny. I think his old music's good. But this new song is just weird. Sound. You've gotten old. Right. It's like Taylor Swift. I never liked her either, but I can admit her old stuff was very catchy. That new album she she turded out this year was the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. And it was like one of the biggest selling albums of the year. And it was complete garbage. We're, you're just old. You've hit that point. Yeah, you know, I watched the... Um, <laughs> the Grammys? The Grammys, and I was bored. You had no idea who anyone was? No. It's like the MTV Music Awards. It was. Well, why are these people? It why was are they kind on my of boring. Screen? I like the Sting. I still I understand like... why the Grammys are on CBS of all channels. Why? It's like the one channel that has no idea about music, and it's like a, for it's basically the old person channel, CBS. CBS. Yeah. Why do they get? Go, this, why do they get the Grammys? What's CBS? That isn't that a drugstore? No, CBS. You said CBS. I meant CBS. If I said it wrong, I apologize. But I don't know. Just weird to me. So like that'd be like an ABC or a Fox thing. Why? Did, you, the did you see this cool commercial for Doritos? Speaking of music, this is my favorite Doritos commercial, and and, and it is Doritos Blaze Dinklage. with Dinklage. But you got to hear this Dinklage. shit. This is like so good. This is so. Doritos Blaze, a bold new flavor that brings the heat. The ice and cold, the Game of Thrones feel to it. Oh, nice. New Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. <laughs> what about him at the end? Oh, Wasn't that the coolest the commercial? Oh, I'm like, a, a part of me is just like, oh, let's get the biggest commercial of the Super Bowl. It's not even us. It's like already online by Doritos. Half well, these, I know, but uh, that's going to be the Super Bowl. It's going like, to yeah. be their big Super Bowl commercial. Yeah, it is. Um, I always will wait until they someone will put them mm. all on uh, YouTube and I'll watch them. But that one is the best with Peter Dinklage and mm. um, Morgan Freeman. Yes. Oh, so Mr. good. Elliot and Buster Rhymes. Yeah, yeah, so good. Yeah. Oh, and I love the whole it, – it's – 
the ice and the fire, yeah, kind of fire the Game of ice, Thrones Game of, yeah. thing. And you know, when you hear Peter Dinklage singing that song, I think of his character in Game of Thrones. It's kind of oh, like Tyrion Lannister. Yeah, it really yeah. fits his character. Um, I'm hoping he. I kicks, know when I think Morgan ass. Freeman, I think of Missy Elliott. So oh, I do all the time. That's I've always said that. You were a huge proponent in the Missy Elliott. Morgan Freeman uh, mashup. Yes. I thought that would always be a great tandem. Yeah, I think you've been saying it for at least 10 years. 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 I think if we look into these papers, it might be scribbled down somewhere. Yeah. The prediction you made. Yeah. (laughs) Finally, Doritos finally figured it out. Finally figured it out. I think think that piece of paper might be missing, and it somehow got to the headquarters. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, you don't have a camera in here anywhere. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, so you think the Patriots are going to win it? Or you think it'll be a tight game? Or what do you think? Close? It's going to be a good game. It's going to be fun. <laughs> a lot of passing and running. Tacklings will happen. It's going to be good. Don't you feel... Okay, so this is what I want to talk to you about. This is big news that happened last week. Vince McMahon bringing the XFL back. Yes. God. In 2020. I thought it was a joke. It looked like an onion. It looked like an onion thing. All I was the like, players have to stand for the anthem. Well, and also uh, they're all gonna have like background checks. And they can't even have a DUI character. Like, they'll all be did you hear what he said? Yeah. Not even a DUI. Yeah. So it eliminates like half, half of the everybody guys of them? that ever played football. Um. Uh, some Johnny Manziel can't go play there, and Colin Kaepernick definitely won't be playing there. Uh. So, I don't know. It's it sounds be... like a joke again. I, I'm like, why? Why are we rehashing all these old things? This goes back to my, we're rebooting, we're redoing all. We, this is a bad dream. We had the XFL. It I, sucked. With him, I think it's. Uh, Dude, do you remember the XFL when it happened? I do remember the XFL. How bad it was? They were. It, they was, were... A, it was a well thought out idea. It was so bad, though. It was it embarrassing. It was badly executed. Near the, the end. problem with XFL, I've seen – there's a documentary on ESPN that if you get a chance to watch it – I know you're not a huge sports guy, but if you get a chance to watch it, it's all about the XFL, and it is unbelievably good. I would watch it just because – It explains the whole reasoning behind why it didn't work. Nobody cared. No, that wasn't even the problem. Ratings. Uh, ratings it wasn't even ultimately? the ratings. Well, ratings was the, the final thing of it, but – uh, they interview a lot of people from NBC that were part of it, and they interview McMahon and all that stuff. And the thing was, they came up with this idea. And uh, they came up with it in, like, May, say. And they ended up, uh, because of the hype of it and how much traction it got right away, NBC was like, we need this, like, now. So they literally had from May to January to plan a whole league and everything come up with all the rules, come up with all the players, find everything. They didn't even have time to get the players trained up the way they were supposed to be for a season. Like if NFL, you have four preseason games. Yeah. You have training camp, all this stuff. These guys basically, they were put on teams, played like two games, and then were like thrown to the dogs to play on national television. Yeah. So it was like it just never was like given the time to get ready. So you think this, this is why he's doing, I think, why this is the whole impetus behind. I'll announce it now. And in two years, we'll do it. Gotcha. So this year, they'll worry about getting all the stuff figured out. Next year, they'll worry about getting all the teams picked, like, set up. They'll have the, like, yeah. you can start picking players, drafting players, doing this kind of thing. I just don't want them to go down the road where when the XFL was losing steam, they were start they started promoting, going, we're going to take you to Cheerleaders' locker room. And it was just so gratuitous. Well, that was the it time was frame, so too. bad. That was, during like the WWE's like Attitude Era, where it was all very, you know, tinging on X-rated. Even the wrestling at that point was that way. Like there's a lot of stuff and skits and different stuff they did that was. It kinda, was embarrassing. Ooh, okay. That I remember awkward. watching working at Chi-Chi's when so, they had yeah, that, so they those would, commercials on. It was so things, bad. But I mean, there's definitely. I always said there was a spot. There's I always thought there was a spot for a secondary league. Like, there used to be, like, NFL Europe and all these different things. But they still have NFL Europe, don't they? No, it's gone. It's gone. But don't these guys play over there during the offseason? No, no. Not anymore? No. I mean, you have the Canadian Football League. Yeah. Which is successful. It's really huge in Canada. 
Yeah. It's but amazing that different. we don't have it's just always, the NFL it's is just not part of the Canadian not, team. That would or the be NFL's cool. never had like a minor league. Like basketball has and hockey, hockey has and baseball. It's like you're in the NFL or you're not. There's no like so other maybe, option. Maybe Vince McMahon can make it so work. So I think this if time. he like works off that idea, but a far as a yeah. You definitely have to you. get like either some of the guys that are on their way out of the NFL or on the tinge of being like on the NFL. You know, here's a question. Why hasn't, big names. why hasn't the NFL opened up to our northern friends, the Canadians, as baseball and hockey has? I don't understand why football has not said. I know they play football differently. It's all different. But why, it's way different. It would be cool if they opened up and they made more teams in the league. But America would want them to play our style, yeah, not their style. Exactly. So maybe that's yeah, why. that's why. That's a shame. Yeah. It's and NFL is thinking of going to London as opposed to going to Canada. So. That seems too much. Yeah. But they – no, they, they don't play fo- – their football is soccer. Well, they they play regular season games. They've played four each year regular season games in London the past two years. Yeah, I knew that. Like a so, like exposition – or do they no, play full regular normal? season games now. But it's like a special thing. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's during the season. It's not like they don't like get anything different. It's sort of like a um, like they've been talking about well, before the Jaguars actually got good, and yeah. they made it to the AFC Championship game this year. Yeah, uh, the rumor was that the whole team would just transplant to London. That'd be weird. Yeah, That'd they'd have true. like a team in London. I mean, that's always been like the. I don't know if they're trying to get that way, or if they want to like rebring back the NFL Europe idea. But there needs to be some kind of feeder system besides just college football, I think. I think it would be more plausible to get Canada involved. I think it would be awesome. Canadian yeah. football. Come on, get it involved. Canadian football is awesome. I love watching Canadian football. What if, they, what if we came the to – Go closer to the front of the end zone. But what if they came to an, uh, an idea where longer. they took both ideas and pushed them together and, like, added new rules and took away rules? That would be called XFL, probably. You know, if the NFL did it with Canada. I know, but I'm saying that's probably what the XFL ended up being. Yeah, but is the XFL going to be just in the United States? Yes. Well, I don't know. No one knows. Nobody knows. There's going to be eight teams. They're going to play ten games. Didn't you say he wanted to have, like, a team for every state or something eventually? Oh, probably. Probably. That would be ridiculous. I I'm assuming I'm kind of thinking there's going to be one in Hartford. Did we have one during the XFL? Did we did we not a, before. We didn't have a Connecticut one? No. Was there a Massachusetts one? No. There, was not, there wasn't really. There was... I know there was like, uh, oh man, they're trying to make me think. I know there was a New York one. I want to say, a New York, New Jersey, something. And then I like, didn't they? There was one um, in Miami. There was one in Las Vegas. I know that Las Vegas. Outlaws. Didn't they have on the back, on their back of the jerseys? They, they could can put write, whatever they wanted. That's so silly. Within reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah there so was then, only eight teams. Yeah. You had Birmingham, Birmingham, Thunderbolts, yeah. Chicago Enforcers, New York, New Jersey Hitmen. Yeah. Wow. I can't imagine New York, New Jersey liking that very much. Well, they were named after uh, Bret Hart. That was a, the Hitman. I know, but Bret you Hart. know how New York, New Jersey So they have the same color scheme and everything. Orlando like Rage, Las Vegas Outlaws, Los Angeles Extreme, Memphis Manix. Maniacs. 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 I guess. Yeah, Francisco you're right. Demons. San Francisco Demons. Yeah, so it was very West Coast, East Coast. Yeah, there's no one really. I mean, Orlando. No, Orlando's on a coast. Sorry. Well, New Jersey. Chicago's in the middle of the up. up New north. Jersey was the closest to here. Because it was really it was played at like think, Memphis, Memphis. I think it was played at Rutgers. I think they used that stadium. Wow. It was 2001 know. season. What did they go on to go one season? They went one season, and that was it. Wow. Yeah, and the the million dollar game they called it. Yep, because the team won a million each. Like Los Angeles won thirty eight to six. Yeah, that's a silly the million dollar game. It's very wrestling esque. They got to give it it a better name. Based off because the whole the whole shtick was wrestling. I know. uh, Ted DiBiase was there. Vince McMahon looks like crap. He looks like one of those Muppets. He's seventy years old. He looks like one of those Muppets from those uh, the uh, Phil Collins. I was going to say Dark Crystal or something like yes, that. Yes, he looks like one of those Muppets from the Phil Collins video, yeah, Land of Confusion. Yeah. 
He looks like one of those Muppets. The he's, British TV show that they had. He's looking like one of his, like a parody of himself. He looks so weird. Yeah, it's it's no good. It looks like he got a lot of work done in his face. Like, he got a lot of plastic surgery. Actually, he probably didn't. It's just weird. Uh, I don't know. He looks just bizarre. He's just me. old. He's 70 years he old. He doesn't look natural. He's he 70. He does not look natural. It doesn't matter. I've seen 70 year olds. Well, it's just kind of weird, too, because he's like standing on like a digital background. <laughs> he's so standing? Kinda... You, well, he was sitting behind a desk. No, he was standing behind a desk. All right. Well, to me, I don't know what he was doing, but. But, yeah. So, I mean, he's talking about it. They're talking about bringing it back. It's two years away, so it's not like. Yeah, actually started a whole new company just to do this. It's not connected to the WWE at all. Alpha Entertainment is actually the company that's putting this on. Who, wait, WWE? WWF? WWE is not a part of the XFL. Vince McMahon started a new company <coughs> on the side of WWE called Alpha Entertainment, and that's actually starting the XFL. Uh. He sold, I think he sold like 70 million shares of WWE to be able to start this new company. Wow. Yeah. So he's he wants to do it right, I guess. Yeah. I mean, he's always said it's like if you've like I've seen a bunch of like interviews with them and stuff and all this stuff. And like if you like watch a lot of the old uh interview stuff with him, he <laughs> always stuff. wanted to before he got into wrestling with his father who owned the company before he did. Uh-huh. His like dream was to own a football franchise and own like so, a team in the NFL. But he could just buy an NFL team. But he doesn't like I, since the XFL thing. That's not going to happen. The NFL is not going to let him in. And they've he's tried to buy teams before and had issues. And they don't want to let him in. A lot of celebrities own teams. Yeah, but I think it's just the NFL doesn't want him in the league. So I think then it's become well. If you're not going to let me in, then I'm going to start my own and run it myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, interested to see how many players he gets since all the background checks. See, I always and... thought, like, instead of doing, like, a full-blown football league, like, like outdoor football and all that, I thought he'd be better at, like, starting, like, bringing back, resurging again. I don't know if it's still around. The Arena League. Like, indoor football. Like they used oh, to play Arena the, Football? Yeah, they used to play at the Hartford Civic Center. I remember I went to one of those. Yeah, can I get Seawolves? Yep. Like, that was, like, a good time. That's awesome. That's all right. It was good. I mean, it was fast I mean, that'd pace. be more his kind of thing, I would think. Arena football. And you could do it in the fall and the winter. Yeah. And he's got all the same kind of setup. And he's got people that work inside that know how to do that. So yeah, you'd think that'd be more of where he would go. The money's probably not there. He's not competing fails. as much against the NFL. Well, I think he wants to go big or go home. Well, I know, but I'm just, I just yeah. think you would. The arena football was cool. I've been to one game, and, I mean, it's very action-packed. Yeah. Um, Because there's no, like, out of bounds. The ball bounces up a wall. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's still in play until it's the ground. It hits the wall. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, it was I good stuff. I, I used know. to love watching arena football. I can't say I used. To, I, 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 yeah, I liked it one of the I, once I saw that one time. Mm. You know, um, I, yeah, I do remember the Hartford Civic Center having. A team. Yeah, can I get Seawolves? Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting. Well, maybe it's a good thing he's uh, doing it now. Yeah, I mean, two years away. I'll see what happens with um, the rules, though. It's going to be interesting. I think that's the one thing. Well, he's open up to the fans. He wants to know what the fans want to see and what the fans want. Well, and... I think the one thing the NFL has really gotten wrong is that when a a player does something horrible, they don't punish them. And when they do, it seems out of whack. Like when a guy never a common denominator. Well when a guy physically harms his wife in an elevator, he 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 gets suspended for four games. No, maybe domestic abuse would be like you're not allowed well, to play. That guy lost again. his job. He's not playing no more. Yeah, but then originally wasn't it four games? It wasn't like Well it was four games until they had seen the until they got the information. There was a whole tape conspiracy about yeah. did they see the tape before? Did they hide the tape? Yeah. Then you have other players. There was a, a guy who was he, uh, abused against his child. What happened to that guy? These things were just dropping the ball. NFL dropped the ball. He was suspended ball. a year. 
You should be not. You should not be playing. I mean, that's pretty messed up. It was come to find out that it wasn't as extreme as it was reported to be, and uh, that's that's a weak. That's weak because if you're hitting a child, I think that just well, no, because ex- like it was... how is that? How is it? If you report that to the police, you don't go. Well, it's not as bad as it looks. That black eye. I mean, it seems weird. There wasn't a black eye. He still hit his kid. He whatever hit him with he a did. Switch a little stick. I spanked him. I don't. I don't know the details, but well, I'm telling you, that's what happened. Anyway, well, I'm just saying none, none of us are there. I'm just saying the NFL lets these players well, get away with a lot. Was, Someone smokes marijuana, he gets in trouble for like a four couple, games. Four games. First but, time. But and then you know Tom Brady uh, deflates balls. Supposedly, allegedly, he gets over a year before he gets in trouble. Well, because he kept prolonging the. Well, he lost. He dropped his cell phone with the text messages. <laughs> Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's Still just, a Super Bowl anyway. It's, it's but, just so weird how the NFL works when it comes to punishing people. It's just bizarre. Like, they don't really have well, a clear no, idea what they're doing. What the problem with this, that whole thing is, is the player Association, when they went through the last collective bargaining agreement, for some reason, I don't know who was the person that thought this was a good idea, they gave all that decision-making abilities – to Roger Goodell, the commissioner. Yeah, which it should be so a board. So basically he's judge, jury, and executioner. Yeah, it shouldn't be. He, he can – it's just whatever he feels like that day, basically. Yeah. So there's no, like, check and balances to it. It's just, oh, okay, yeah, give him six games. Well, I kind of like Vince McMahon saying one – you do one thing against a rule, you're done. And I think that's good. That's good. It'll keep people more honest. Here. Well, it's a good idea. Yeah, it's a great idea, I think. To see if he actually goes through with it, that's a different thing. You know what? He's He said it, and if those are the rules... I mean, and, they have that if, in the WWE. They just had a guy that got uh, allegedly uh, sexual uh, misconduct. Yeah, and they got rid of him. And they just fired him well, right that, off the bat. That makes me feel that he would keep his promise for the XFL. If mm. they already did that in the wrestling world, yeah. I would believe Vince McMahon would... I have a high standard saying, listen, we're not going to deal with this. Mm. And that would just cause more controversy, and they don't want that. Mm. So if one guy gets pulled over, it would make the news, It's basically he'd be gone. He's going to – this league is going to try to feed off that, that group of NFL fans who turned off watching the NFL yeah. because a couple of players decided not to stand for National Anthem. Which doesn't affect the game whatsoever. No. Doesn't affect but in the their game. minds, it's... I know. Well, it's a not, bad thing. Yeah, I so know. It's, it's that's what that league is going to try to feed off of that. But It'll it's going to be two years down the road, so who knows even if then if, if, if that's the same... There's a huge contingent of people that are like that. I know. Well, just, I just don't. Maybe Vince McMahon can get those people. I mean, I've never... Like, if I'm not working a game... I'm not usually paying attention to the National Anthem anyways, so. They don't show it that often before games on TV anyways, so it's not like it affects my watching of the game. Well, all those people that complain about it, I would ask them one simple question. So when you're at home watching, do you stand up and pledge? (laughs) And if they all say no, then I'm like, you're a hypocrite because, you know, the players normally wouldn't be out in the field anyway. They just started that not that they long. They started that ago. like not even ten years ago. Yeah. So originally, no, none of the players would be in the field. It was basically like right after nine eleven is when it really like yeah. got more intense. Yeah. Before yeah. that, the players weren't even on the field. At yeah. The time. So I mean, it's not that big of a deal, folks. But if someone feels it that way, what can you do? Let's move on to more happier things. Ant yes. Man in the Wasp trailer hit. Yes. Yes. Uh, very exciting. Um, I was very excited by it. I'm it kind of came out of nowhere. It kind of just appeared. Just like the Han Solo trailer. trailer hasn't appeared. Which we, we were we were all on Twitter about it last week, and guess what? It hasn't dropped. Nothing. We got nothing. So, Super Bowl, this Sunday. Will it drop? It has to. It's a 50-50 shot. It might It's either not. Super Bowl or Black Panther. Black Panther. If it doesn't happen after Black, if it doesn't happen for Black Panther, I just we're feel just like there's just it. trouble. I feel like... So that's February. You have January, February, March, April, May. That's three months out. Less than three months out. Yeah. It's got to happen soon. No, wait a minute. 
It's like two months out. Yeah. Because February 14th, so March 14th, yeah. April 14th. Oh, wait, maybe that is exactly three months. Yeah. So that's... That's how calendar works. No, I'm just trying to think the dates. Is I it know. May 1st? But then look at, but then on this other side, look at this. Like, we're now talking about Ant-Man and Wasp, which comes out in July. I know. And we're getting a trailer for it. I didn't realize we had Black Panther. We had Avengers. Mm-hmm. Then we have Ant Man in July, and that's it. We have three Marvel movies. Yep. There's something. That's it for this year. I, I think. Think, I think so. So. Well, Deadpool doesn't really count as a Marvel movie. It's, well, I'm considered the MCU. Yeah. Deadpool is its own thing. Um, I think Disney, if they're smart, they would just announce it right now. Let's move solo to christmas time i was i was just at costco today saw our friend chris mortensen who's been Mm -hmm. on the show before and we're talking about star wars he's like oh i haven't even seen the new one yet and we're talking and i go well i got han solo coming out may and he goes what i go yeah han solo's coming out in may he goes wait a minute wait a minute no 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 don't they put him out in christmas time and i go yeah that's the problem he goes wait a minute i haven't even seen a poster i go well there's a poster it just says solo on it and he goes What? It's and a like, Star Wars story. He was so confused. I'm like, yeah, he really comes out in May. And yeah. he goes, I, I don't what he was so like there's usually a big um uh, promotional push for these movies. And I go, This one's that's so weird. I told him like a bunch of reshoots. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they don't even have the trailer ready. I don't know. Yeah. I think Disney would be smart to push it. They're not moving it. That's <sighs> gonna be where it is. I don't know. And there's those only three Marvel movies this year. Confirmed. Yeah. I think Star Wars should be moved to Christmas. Just say it now. Just say, listen, we need more time. It's going to be weird this Christmas without any kind of Star Wars movie. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind, kind of... throws of, off your Christmas. I kind of want... It's like I got to focus on Christmas now. I kind of want Solo to be moved. It's going to be a bummer. I have to like, focus on Christmas. Maybe I won't see Solo, and I'll wait, wait till Christmas. Wait December to watch it. Christmas, and I'll watch it then. I'll like I'll go buy the DVD yeah, and, and I'll watch, watch it on the fourteenth. Oh, Christmas, Star Wars. I mean, then there's gonna come a point in time where you're just gonna be like, all right, I'm sick of Star Wars. Please, no more Star Wars films this year. And I'm telling you, they're gonna take a year off because they're not. I'm already fatigued right now. I'm 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 kind of like no, you're not. I I I don't know how I feel about Solo because I haven't seen anything of substance. As soon as you see something and th- and it looks and if it does look good. You're going to be like, all right, forget about it, I'm in. Of course I'm going to be in. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm just saying, I'm it's really... It's going to all turn around very quickly. I'm very concerned. You're like, oh, fine, May's fine. If it comes out... I'm May, concerned about this film. I'm hoping it's going to be good. I'm concerned. It's not good it's news. It's a Star Wars story. It's not like it's an episode story, so I'm not, like, totally... I get that. I get ...stressed that. out about it. But still. But... I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll anyway, let Batman talk- and the Wasp has come out with a trailer. Yeah, let's play that. I have one question. When Cap needed help, if I'd asked you, would you have come? I guess we'll never know. But if you had, you'd have never been caught. I like how they did the <coughs> Civil War stuff. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Is like I'm now going back to all these characters. After Civil War happened, you're going to see, like, But this takes where place out. This is going to take place. This is interesting. This takes place out after um, Civil War. No, after. This is going to take place after uh, the Avengers movie in May. So is Ant-Man not going to show up in that movie? No, he's in it. It's, isn't it. Doesn't it kind of weird you out a little bit that we're seeing a trailer for a movie that's going to be taking place after another movie that we haven't even seen yet? Or a trailer for We've seen trailers. Well, I mean, like an actual trailer, trailer, not like a teaser. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. there was a trailer, right? Yeah, I mean, like not like. But isn't it weird? It doesn't throw your mind off a little bit? Like it makes kinda. me kind of like. We well, you know he lives then through Infinity War. Exactly. Doesn't that <laughs> like? That's what I'm getting at. So that's fine. So congratulations to Ant Man for surviving. Yeah. Infinity War. I do some dumb things, and the people I love the most. They pay the price. Thanks to you, we had to run. I, I love the turning the building small yeah. in front of everybody in the world. In the, and, and, and everybody in the city, 
Uh, Are there people inside the building at the time that he shrinks it? I, I think they cleared it out. I, if I had to guess, there's people after them. They need to hide all their secrets. Everybody's out of that building. He shrinks it down and takes it with him because... And why is the building on roller skates? Like, is that building always on those wheels? No, he put it on a, um, a carrying uh, luggage case. Oh. Okay. They just cut that part out. Oh, okay. I bet you when we see the whole scene, he lifts it up. But the, the things come on the top of the building. No, watch. Watch it again. No. See, the thing comes right at the top of the building, and it's on the bottom of the building. I'm a man of science, <laughs> and that's a stupid scene. <laughs> In my yeah, world... You see the thing move, you're and right. it's like the wheels you're are right. I, I was wrong. So it constricts into that little holder. Uh-huh. And if you were to go up there when it's a real building... Are those things like inside the building? Because those the constrictor arm things got to go somewhere. What if there's a scene before he shrinks the building that he puts this luggage case thing like next to the building, and then when it shrinks, it falls on top of it? Or it, but it doesn't though. It just you just saw the thing. I did see the thing come out, out of the, the top of the building. I don't know. I'm a man of science. I can't think. So that means there has to be this. two pillars for the arms to go into. Inside the building. Mark, can't think too much about this. Just saying. I was a man of science. <laughs> That's what has to happen. You know, I'm a man of science, and none of this would happen. This is yeah. all fantasy. Well, I don't know how they make themselves small and big again. That's the thing. I don't Let's like. go back and watch that scene again. All right. Let's do it. All right. No, go right, back. Here, missed it. Here we go. Here we go. He presses it. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go back to the house. Let's see the roof. There it is. There's the arm right there. there it looks uh, like okay, a on top, pipe. on top of this building, in this trailer, at it looks 29 like an, seconds like a, in, like a pipe. There area. is a gigantic pipe. exhaust pipe kind of situation. So when he built this building, he built this into it, knowing he could shrink it. So this was a shrinkable building to begin with. So he also knows that there's two pillars that go all the way down that building. Yeah, to hold the arm. And there's going to be wheels. Underneath. Well, when it shrinks, it goes into a holder. That's the same. I bet you anything he built this small, and then he made it big. That would make more sense. That's a lot of work. Because imagine all the inside stuff you got to do for the small. No, 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 no. He built built everything small. No, no, no. He you built you build a shell. Once it goes big, you probably build the floors and all electrical stuff's got to be small. That goes in later. That goes once it's big. Oh, that's too much work. That goes. That's that's how you build buildings. How do you think electrical work goes in buildings? Someone has to put it in there. It doesn't magically show up. Well, still, he had to build all the exhaust stuff on the top and everything small. He didn't. No, no, no. What I'm saying is he built a shell. But he still had to build the arms inside the building when it was small, though. That's not that hard when it's small. I guess, but it's still... Yeah, like, but then he made tiny, it big. Little tiny arms down in there. All right, so we see where the handle is. Yes. So he walks up. And there it is. See, that was the arm. Yeah, but then if you go like a microsecond back, as it's shrinking. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. So go over next frame. Just hit the little side, hit your air button. Oh, geez, it didn't work the way I wanted to. So it should be just like, yeah, there you go. How does the building pop up in the air and get on the little platform? He built it on the platform. We're still running. But there's a little hole in the ground there. We can't think too hard about this. I don't like it. Now we're going to watch this movie now. Was Lawrence Fishburne the bad guy? Um, I don't know. That's cool. Shrinking, yeah. going into the car there. There's a lot of cool things Giant you can do. Man. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Like a partner. This is a cool scene with the knife. Well, it's all along the lines of like the uh, scene from the first one, the gun. Yep. And blasters. So I take it you didn't have that tech available for me. No, I did. <laughs> Anthony's back. I knew Anthony. I, I like the Pez thing. More jokes where they use uh, normal, everyday, small things yes. and turn them big. Yeah. 
You know, it was fun. It was like a lot That's of fun. It's gonna be a good time. I I mean, I really like the I really like the first one. Um, like I saw, I still haven't rewatched it. Um, there's like, parts that are kind of, eh, and there's parts that are good. Like a lot of these origin movies, it's either they hit or miss for me. I mean, I always like them, but some I like more than others. Yeah. Like Guardians, I watched multiple times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Thor, I actually really saw that multiple Even times. Even Guardians 2 on rewatch isn't as bad as I thought it was the first time. Guardians 2 isn't bad. It's pretty middle of the road good. I mean, yeah. I just have a lot of problems with it's it was just a, it was boring. A, it was a get to movie. Yeah, it, it didn't do it didn't do much it got on you the scale. Two reasoning me. why Star Lord is who he is. Yeah. That's an explaining movie. I just wish Guardians Three keep the team together. We already had Guardians One where the team got together and they're like we're family, yeah. and then all of a sudden two they're like let's split them apart. I hate that. Keep them together. Have yeah. a, an adventure together. Yeah. We don't need to have them all in different places. And uh, Star Lord uh, having exposition. I mean, mm. hit Kurt Russell just gave exposition the entire movie. Yeah, he really did until he turned into ego. Yeah, but it was kind of. And why did he have these things built to give exposition? Did he just invite people over and show him his his whole life story with these stupid little yeah. statues? It was yeah. weird. It just seemed weird. Yeah, it was weird, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I mean, it's not bad. I still get choked up at the Ravenger scene. At the end. Oh, with what's-his-face? With Yondu, yeah. Gets you every time. Maybe it's a Cat Stevens song playing in the background. It, it was a pretty sad... It was a good one. It was a good, yeah, it was a good, good one. one. He has to die in everything he's in anyway. He does, Matt, uh, Michael Rucker. Yeah. I mean, he dies in Walking Dead. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! He's been dead for a while, man. <laughs> uh, we also, uh, this week, uh, Black Panther premiered. Yeah, I gotta look up. To huge, huge ratings People, and reviews. Reviews, yeah. Saying this is gonna change the Marvel Universe. This is gonna be a whole different Marvel from here on out because of this movie. Well, I think Avengers is gonna change it. Well, I know that will, but I mean, as of right now, Black Panther's getting. It is. Um, I'm very excited for Black Panther. I don't, I'm getting excited for Black Panther. They're ecstatic, Vanity yeah. Fair says. I mean, it's Black Panther. I mean, it's not like he's a huge... I was never a huge fan of Black Panther. Never was like a guy who was like, oh, Black Panther, I gotta read that. I don't know. But we'll see how it goes. It should be good. You know, there's other thing that should be coming out soon. It was a Deadpool trailer, like a real Deadpool trailer. Yeah, that should be coming out soon. I hope. Because uh, that comes out when, May? Yeah, they pushed it to May. Yeah, so a la Solo. <laughs> we still haven't gotten like a trailer trailer for the movie itself. We've gotten the teaser trailer things. Yeah, May's packed. Yeah. I mean, May, you have Solo, you have Avengers. Deadpool. And I think Deadpool got moved from June or June first or something. Let me see. Let's check the old interwebs here. Deadpool two comes out do, 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 do. May eighteenth. May eighteenth. Yep. Wow! And when does Solo come out? May twenty fifth. I think it's not the week before, week after. Wow, this is well, like... Avenger comes out at the beginning of the month, like May 4th. Jeez, and imagine when Disney so owns 20th like... Century Fox, it'd just be competing against itself. Ugh. Well, no, that's Sony, right? Or is that Fox? What is? Deadpool. It's 20th Century Fox. Yeah. I'm just saying, when they obtain that, if they I would, all, they would literally just be competing against themselves. Well, they are now between Solo and Avengers. But those two movies are like at the end and the beginning of the month. Yeah, but they're still competing against each other technically. If um, that's I why guess. Solo is moved to later in the month. So that way they get the the time to. This is why Solo should be Christmas. Keep Star Wars Christmas. I don't know. I don't know why they listen to Keep us. Keep the Christmas in Star Wars. Yeah, we've had we had the Deadpool, the Bob Ross, the Bob Ross. Yeah. 
Um, we haven't had like the full blown like what the movie's about, and, like Josh Brolin in character scenes from the movie trailer yet. Yeah, should be good though. Pretty good. That should be coming yeah. soon. Maybe Super Bowl. Ooh, maybe. Get a Deadpool two trailer. Get a solo trailer. Uh, maybe. We shall see. In Star Wars news, another Star Wars news, I think we've uh, discussed multiple times on the show. Battlefront 2 Battle undersold. Battlefront 2 undersold its predictions uh, for what it was supposed Excuse to uh, have for sales. Uh, they only sold 9 million copies. They were expecting to sell 10 million copies by now. So with that news coming out, uh, the favorite part of Battlefront 2 is coming... T- Back, but, that Brian loves so much. But EA blames Loot Crate controversy, which is funny. Yes. Well, I stopped playing the game. I already played the DLC. I probably, unless I get free uh, um, story DLC, I probably won't play the game again. I don't know. If Do there was, if there was like an extension to that story, like like you said, did like, you finish it? Yeah. I can't feel that it's like the ending. But I mean, if they like start going into her story, the daughter's story, or something, yeah. To make the story go along i will put it back on i still have it installed on. in my system i will probably play it. it's not a, like i don't never play the online stuff anyways i so. played online a couple times it's kind of fun but i mean yeah. i'm not gonna go full crazy on yeah. it i'm playing horizon right now and i i've noticed mr i post everything on facebook so do you my, my video game stuff. You like post your food. Game. You po- I'm eating lasagna today. Well, Claire made lasagna. It was delicious. <laughs> so that's what social media is for. Everyone should have her curd lasagna. Don't it's mock me. Delicious. She makes this, this, puts a sausage in it, and a little bit of meatball in there. Oh, my own. You post everything you eat, so don't Not give, everything. Don't give me any crap. Just really cool things I eat. Or I'm cool eating places. a meatball. Um, that was meatball. That was a, they closed that place though on Boston Road. You know. Speaking of places that closed, I'm I, speaking of places that closed. It's pretty crazy that in Enfield we had a restaurant Molinas, Molinas closed here in town because finally the, the, the owner was busted for heroin. He was bringing heroin and cocaine into the yeah, town that into the country. People were pissed that yeah. they were supporting this guy. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Um, I'm glad it's closed. It sucks for the workers. It may not have known what was going well, on. Well, I guess the whole but... shtick with the place staying open for so long was that he was just owning it recently. He had stopped working at the restaurant. Yeah. It had handed over to somebody else, I believe. He's too busy doing drugs. I guess he was busy doing the other stuff, but yeah, I don't happens. know. So it sucks that that place is gone because it was a very popular eatery here in town. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming someone will purchase it, rename it. Open it back up again. Maybe someone else will buy it and do something else. Usually know? it's like someone who works at the restaurant or something like that will do it. But we'll see. And other closing things, Toys R Us. Closing over 180 stores. They're closing one in Manchester. Yeah, three in town. Three in state are going. I, I got to go to that one. I get, get some deals. Yeah, you're going to have to. Dude, some good deals on Star Wars stuff, yeah. video games. Yeah. I mean, um, the one I, right by me is still going to stay open, so. Was did you look at the list? Yeah, that's the only one that by me is getting gone is the one in Holyoke, by the mall. They're closing that one. Mm. We're in the mall. The babies are us. They have there. I think they're closing that in the mall. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Toys R Us was. Mm. It was like Child World closing. It was like back in the day. Yeah, it's the, the future is Amazon and. You can go to Target or Walmart to buy toys. Well, it's like... It sucks. It's like, toys R Us is awesome. Last night when I got home, Claire's like... I was like, oh, I'm running out of... Like, the other day, I was like, hey, I'm running out of shampoo. She's like, oh, I'll grab it. I was like, all right, cool. Because she works at Walgreens, so I figured, you know, make life easier. So I get home last night. She's like, oh, it'll be here in two days. I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, you're off Amazon. I was like, oh. The wave of the future. What do you know? Don't even leave your house. Just have it brought to you. Yeah. Maybe a drone will drop it off. I don't think we have drone in Connecticut yet. Well, I'm Massachusetts. They're mass. Here's the look. Mass Let's drones. <laughs> you have mass holes already. Mass yeah. drones. Toys R Us. Let me see. Manchester. Manchester's yeah. going. I know it is, but I want to um, know if... The one in... And they also closed BJ's in Manchester, too. 
they are going to be closing that one. Yeah. People are hoping the twenty sixth. Oh, did they? Yeah. People are hoping it will become a Costco. Yeah. Well, we got Sam's Club in Manchester, so yeah, maybe they'll close. You already got one in West Springfield, Enfield. I well, guess Manchester's far enough away. You can have another one. They're closing four stores in Connecticut. Yes, they are. Manchester, there's another one, like, I think, Torrington or something like that. Wow, mid-April? Mm. Ooh, I got to get on those deals now. <laughs> got to get over there. I, when I get paid Friday, man, I'm going. Well, the deals aren't going to be that good right now. They'll start off at 10%, and then they'll go down. They'll, they'll, you got to wait till it gets, like, the 50%. That's when yeah. you get there. The company's planned store closings to begin in early February, with majority closing mid-April. Mm. Wow. So they're going to – to begin – the company store close, closes to begin in early February. So in early February, they'll start doing their slashing of sales, and they'll close in mid-April. Yeah, I got to go. So the one in North Haven, Waterbury, Newington, and Manchester. Wait a minute. The one that says Manchester says Babies R Us. Yeah, just the Babies R Us, not the Toys R Us. Because it's two separate places in Manchester. You didn't say that. No, I didn't. I thought you knew that was happening. No, so it's oh. it's just the... Just the Babies R Us, which is up on the hill. Yeah. It's closing, but the Toys R Us, which is down... It's staying open. Other spot is staying open, yeah. <sighs> okay, I like that. Yeah. So Waterbury... Well, they started to do, like the one in Springfield by me... Is they're uh, combined, like mm-hmm. one half of the store is Toys R Us and the other half of the store is Babies R Us. So that's what they're starting to do. They're starting to like combine the stores together. Yeah, to so make it a combo store. Because the one in Holyoke's just Babies R Us in the mall. Yeah, yeah. And they don't, they don't really sell anything. So they sell baby toys. Well, no, I mean I don't think they really get the. It's Foot pretty. Traffic, it's pretty big for a baby store, but yeah, it is. It's huge. It, is, it's huge. it used to be Toys R Us. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah. Um, okay, so Manchester's just losing Babies R Us. We're keeping toys. That's good news yeah. for all those people out there who care. who care about that. Other things that people care about. The Oscars nominations came out, Brian. Yeah, I know. I'm very excited. Were you excited to see some of the Oscar nominees that came out? Yes. Best director. Your nominees are. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, The Shape of Water, Jordan Peele for Get Out, Greta Gerwig for Lady Bird, Christopher Nolan for Dunkirk, and Paul Thomas Anderson for Phantom Thread. What's your pick? Well, right now? Yes. I've only seen, uh, I saw Shape of Water. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've seen majority of those movies. I haven't seen Phantom Thread, nor have I seen Lady Bird, which I, are on my list. Um, but Shape of Water is my favorite, and I think uh, Del Toro should win because it's just an awesome film. I think Greta Gerwig will win. I think she would not too. because of the movie, just because of what the climate is. Yeah, I haven't seen Lady Bird yet, so I can't. My it's got I a lot of. I mean, it's it's hugely reviewed. No, she won. It's... She won the gold. Uh, no, wait, she didn't win the she gold. Didn't gold. She won the SAG award. She won. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> She could. Totoro won the Golden Globe. Yeah. It could be between those two, I think. I think so, too. But Shape of Water leads the race with 13 nominations. Yeah, it's like the critical darning kind of. It's a really good movie. It's really good. Best Supporting Actor, Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards. Woody Harrelson for Three Billboards. Christopher Plummer for All the Money in the World. William Dafoe for The Florida Project. And Richard Jenkins for Shape of Water. What's your pick there? For what? This is um Best Supporting Actor. Well, Best Supporting Actor. Sam Rockwell got the SAG. He also got the Golden Globe. Yep. I think he's the... Uh... And I th- I think Sam Rockwell's going to get it. I haven't seen three billboards. I hopefully will watch it this weekend. Um, but I think Sam Rockwell's going to get it because he's just sweeping. Mm. Richard Jenkins was really good in The Shape of Water, but I don't know... Uh, I haven't watched the Florida Project. I haven't watched All the Money in the World or Three Billboards. Other, I watched Shape of Water. So out of those, without seeing it, my money's on Sam Rockwell. Yeah, my my money's on that. Yeah, I think that's the 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 winner in the clubhouse kind of. 
So the, the one of the, the uh, ones I'm always a fan of. Uh, we're waiting to see who wins it. Best original music score. We have Star Wars: The Last Jedi, John Williams, The Shape of Water, Alexandra Desplat, Don Kirk, Hans Zimmer, Phantom Thread, Johnny Greenwood, Three Billboards Outside, Carter Burwell. I'm gonna say Shape of Water. I really yeah. the soundtrack. Star Wars is great too, but mm. I, Hans Zimmer with Dunkirk. Dunkirk. I don't the remember. Music was like the whole the whole movie. There was no real. I don't really. Yeah, it held the movie. I don't remember it to tell you. I the mean, truth. for me, so. Star Wars. It's always Star great. Wars. John Williams' stuff's always fantastic. Yeah. I just don't. They just never give Star Wars Oscars. It seems like. No matter what. I think they Star could have like the best Oscar acted before. Star Wars initiative planet, and the guy still get, not get nominated for it. Um. Uh, like I think Hugh Jackman should have been nominated for Logan, but they're not going to give it to him. They got screenplay, yeah, which is great. But still, they not still what got should have gotten. Hugh Jackman should have been nominated um, for best actor. But Dunkirk, that whole movie is basically just music. Yeah, it's not like ninety five percent of it's music. There's yeah. not a lot of actual lines in it. Yeah, so I think that would help. Maybe, maybe you got a point. We'll see there. what happens there. Best supporting actress: no. Leslie Manville, Phantom Thread. Allison Janney, I, Tanya, Laurie Metcalf, Lady Bird, Mary J. Blige, Mudbound, and Octavia Spencer, The Shape of Water. You know what? I love Octavia Spencer was fantastic, but I think Allison uh, Janney for I, Tanya, mm. she was phenomenal. I've heard Laurie Metcalf was like fantastic in Lady Bird. Yeah. She, I, think, I think it's going to be between those two. Yeah, Out I think of all between those? those three, maybe. I think it can be a tough... Like any of those three, I think, would probably get it yeah i mean i i would put money between lady bird and i tanya on that mm. one those two i think are really up there mm. best actress sally hawkins shape of water meryl streep the post francis mcdormand three billboards margot robbie i tanya and i'm gonna butcher this seriosa seriosis ronan yeah i lady bird i think i think it's pretty much hers to lose right it's going to be Frances McDormand because she got the SAG and really, she got the Oscar. I mean, she got the Golden Globe. She got both. I think it's going to be her. I haven't seen it yet. Meryl Streep, The Post is not really getting it's much love. New. It's too new, I think. No, it's just not getting love. Um, I don't think – because all these movies come out now. Um, yeah, I don't know. And Lady Bird, I haven't seen it, but I heard it, she was really good. Oh, I, Did she win the SAG for Lady Bird? Um, I don't remember. No, I, I think Frederick McDormand won both. Frederick McDormand's been killing it. I think her. she's going to get the Oscar. I think she's going to get the Oscar. That'd be cool. Let's go to Best Actor. I think that's... Best Actor, Daniel Day-Lewis, Phantom Thread. Timothy Chalamet for Call Me By Your Name. Daniel Kaluuya, Kaluuya for Get, get Out. Out. Denzel Washington for Roman J. Israel Esquire. Gary Oldman for Darkest Hour. Gary Oldman got the Golden Globe, and I believe he got the SAG. Mm. Um... Denzel Washington was really good in Israel Esquire. The movie was very flat. Um, I didn't even hear about this movie. Yeah, it's he plays this autistic uh, lawyer, oh. and he. Oh, I did hear about it. I it's good. Never seen anything about it's it? Good movie. The ending's a cop out ending. Oh. It did. It's flat. Yeah. Um, Phantom Thread. Daniel Lewis is. I think he's retiring after this film. He is because it was such a stressful film. He was threading a lot. No, I guess because the, the person that he's <laughs> no, playing... No, he said he was retiring anyway. But the person that he's playing is because he's a method guy. Like, he gets into the person. Yeah, I know. But I guess this guy was, like, so, like, I know deranged nothing about almost. Because he's, like, a... He was, like, a fashion designer. Yeah. But the guy was, like, really messed up in his head. Yeah. That he was, like, after this movie, I couldn't could do another one because my, it just messes my brain so much. Well, he said he was retiring prior to even doing this. Well, because he knew he was going to be getting into that, he said. I read an article about it somewhere where he was saying that. Well. Once he knew he was, like, wanting to do this movie, he knew yeah. this was going to be his last one because he wouldn't be able to. I think Gary Owen's going to get for Dark Sour. I, I saw can't it. wait to see it. I I'm have... wanting to see it. Yeah, it's on my list. I got to watch it. Um, yeah, because it takes place around that same time as Dunkirk. It, it does. They yeah. actually talk about Dunkirk in yeah. the movie. Yeah, so I was like, oh, it's wow. Like a, it's like a, a side yeah, it's story. Yeah, like a side story to Dunkirk. It's, well, in Dunkirk, they mention how well, they Churchill, mention Churchill constantly. Churchill is like 
the thing is, Churchill is saying, "Listen, I can't. We can't. We don't have the forces. To I don't want to send all my stuff there and to have save it get these destroyed people. And yeah, not be able to. So keep the war going. The problem is, uh, people took it to their own hands, and they mm. went out and saved these people with their own personal boats well, to bring them the, home. The government went because they figured it'd be easier to get there with the smaller boats because the way. The, yeah, but there's no personal. Those, those were all well, the beach at Dunkirk. Personal boats. Yeah, but yeah. the beach at Dunkirk, it was very shallow, and only certain boats could get in there. Yeah, because but there's and little boats could get in. Boats in there, like the bigger like destroyers and things, <clears throat> couldn't get into it. Yeah, so they can only stay a certain far distance away. Well, they had the pier, but then yeah. they got so destroyed the whole, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Gary Oldman's gonna get it, but it would be really cool if, uh, if the guy from Get Out would get it. Um, I think Get Out needs some love. Yeah, it's been it came out too long ago. I think. So did Dunkirk. It, it did falls from that. It's the same thing. I think they both fall from fall into that unfortunate thing where Oscar people don't like vote for movies that came out earlier in the year. Uh, maybe I hope not. Well, it seems to be like nowadays it's like you release a movie Christmas time, New Year's. It's out for like a month and a half, and it's getting an Oscar win. That's, then the movie goes on the big theaters that, after that. Th- well, this has become the tradition because the theaters don't have the space for these movies because they get overshadowed by all the big – That's a cop-out. No, it's not. That's a cop-out. If you put Shape you of Water – You put Shape of Water at any time, and if it's a good movie, people will watch it. Yes, but when you have Disney telling it people matter. you need that to keep your you're, movie in there for four weeks. You're perpetuating your no. your interests into this argument. No. You're trying to put what you hate about Disney to fit in this little box. No, I'm not. This, is a, this is a thing that's brought up. You look it up. I'm sure up. a lot of people. This is brought up way before Disney movies. This has been happening. Way before yes. superhero movies. The blockbuster this movies same make thing was money. So all those That's movies. Not, this is a whole different argument. No, they all go out there. These movies don't This is not if perpetuated they don't make money, by the big blockbuster They get movie. pushed to. This is now. perpetuated by the Oscars. The people who vote for the Oscars. This is why these movies come out at that time. I, I don't know. I don't buy it. Because Dunkirk was nominated is, and so was Get Out. And those both came out. Yeah, but they're not going to win. It doesn't matter. They still got nominated. It's That's the deal. point. Big deal. When people big are going to win are the movies that just came out. That's not always true. If you go, if you watch this year, what if Dunkirk won? If then Dunkirk your wins, then I'll disagree. Then I'll, and I bet you, I'll if we went in, if we if we went in and watch, looked at all the history, but I bet if you watch right, no, not all the history, but if you watch recent history, look back at recent history, the movies that win were usually movies, unless it was like a fantastic movie that Titanic. you can't like argue. Titanic. With. Yeah, but I think in the past, probably like five to ten years. <laughs> <laughs> movies that won or all movies yes, that came out because during the, the year, year January, the theaters are only putting out the big films that make money and the smaller films don't last that's the that's the bottom line it's all about money it's a business but if the movie's good it's good there's plenty of great movies that go under the radar that make no money they're well, there's plenty hits. of great movies that came out earlier in the year that should be nominated <clears throat> what do you mean there's plenty of movies that probably come out early in the year that could have been nominated too. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I haven't like, seen I them all. I think Logan should have been nominated for stuff. I do too. The acting in that was fantastic. I, I think know. Hugh Jackman was I, I don't disagree with that one. I'm just making the point that but I think because a lot it of came these out movies... so long ago and because it's a superhero movie, people don't look at it as an actual movie. But still got nominated for, for script, which is really That's, cool. Whatever. It's like and Star, Star Wars, Wars got nominated for, for sound for stuff. Woohoo! What's that sound editing? Star Wars. It it's, always gets nominated for sound editing, and it always wins. Not always. It usually does. It also got score. Special effects. Special effects. I mean, um, the stuff big movies usually get nominated for. And we have to. We can't forget Heath Ledger. Well, that was a different... He still got it. Yeah, well, I have a theory on that, but whatever. Well, okay, let's go to Best Picture. Best Picture. Shape of Water. Mm-hmm. Darkest Hour. Dunkirk, Phantom Thread, Three Billboards Outside. Eben, Missouri, yeah, where Jeremy Hutzel was born. Yes. Get Out, The Post, Call You By Your Name, Lady Bird. I, Only one of those movies has been out in theaters for longer than probably six months, or two of those movies. 
uh, Get Out is came out like what February March of yes. last year, and Darkest Dunkirk Hour came and... Dunkirk Dunkirk came, came out, out in and... like in the summertime. Yes, um, <clears throat> every other movie's like been out like in the past three months. I'm gonna say Shape of Water should get it uh, from the ones I've seen so far. Um, yeah, I don't think the three billboards will get it. I haven't seen it. No. I can't tell you my opinion, but or Lady Bird. I haven't seen it. I they're on my list. Um, yeah. Uh, I've seen Shape of Water, I've seen Dunkirk, I've seen Get Out. Um, and out of those three, I will put my money in Shape of Water. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think Three Billboards has a good chance of winning it. Um, it would be great if an underdog got it, like last year. Everybody thought La La Land was going to get it, and then Moonlight got it. Um, so that was kind of like the underdog. Yeah. So it would be interesting. I think... I think well, it depends on who you talk to. If you talk to What's-Her-Face, La La Land did get it. Who? Faye Dunaway. In her world, La La Land's still celebrating. Faye <laughs> Dunaway? You mean uh, uh, Warren Beatty? He's the one that screwed it up. Yeah, but through both of them in their <laughs> world. <laughs> you see the Jimmy Kimmel commercials? Yeah. Where he's like in therapy? Yeah. I still remember that day. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean... I gave you a copy... Of I, Tanya and uh, I haven't watched it yet. And uh, what I, I, I just, disaster just, artist. yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Um, but yeah, I think Shape of Water, I really love Shape of Water a lot. It I really heard it's cool. really good, it was. I really want to see it, it's like I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of them I want to see. I want to see Darkest Hour, I want to see Three Billboards, I want to see Lady Bird, I really want to see The Post, it's got Tom Hanks in it, and I'll watch. Tom Hanks and pretty much anything. Well, I mean, you have Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, and uh, Meryl, what's Streep. Your, Meryl Streep is triple threat. But it's, it's not so getting much on. love. It's not getting much love when it comes to awards. Shows. Well, so the history. It's like a weird – it's not like a normal – What? Well, it's not like a usual <laughs> it is. movie that Steven Spielberg usually gets nominated for. I mean, besides Schindler's List. Yeah. I'm just saying, I think – Ryan. Well, I, never mind. I'm totally wrong. Yeah, I'm like he does history <laughs> films all the time. Is you? That's all it's he's not done, like you know. I'm real looking forward to uh, like Ready Player One. A weird, Speaking a of weird Spielberg, movie. I don't know why. Spielberg, Ready Player One. I'm very yeah, excited. Yeah, it's gonna be that. awesome. It looks yeah. really good. The more yeah. I see it, March comes out. Uh, really already? Comes out in March. <clears throat> March 30th or something like that. Wow, I'm very excited for that. Um. But anywho, yes, that's all your Oscar. Those nominees. are our predictions. I'm excited. It's my Super Bowl. That's what I get excited for. I like watching them all, and I'm I'm uh, halfway through my list. When's that? Well, March is that when Oscars are? Oscars is the first weekend of March. Yeah, got a whole got all of February. I got a lot of catching up to do. Uh-uh. A lot of movies to watch. I feel like I'm way behind on Oscar movies this year. Usually it's a lot. I don't know. It seems like even the Oscar movies have been out more. <coughs> Bless you. Like, I've never found it as difficult to find the movies. Yes. It's because, I'm telling you, it's because the big blockbusters take up all the space. But there's plenty of space. There hasn't been any big blockbusters in the past, like, two months. Jumanji. Jumanji was a huge hit. Yeah, one theater. And Jumanji's probably playing... Jumanji plays at one theater. It's probably playing these in movie two theaters. movie theaters have 18 theaters. Yeah, and all these movies are in them right now because it's a, it's a dry spell. Like even January. Eastfield. I'll tell you what's playing at Eastfield right now. Okay, you tell me, Mark. I don't know why we're arguing about this. Who cares? Well, it's just a stupid argument. It's not a stupid argument. It's an argument that people have these been making. These have plenty of theaters that could be airing these movies in. Now they are. But when they, fr- I Tanya came out limited release. Even when they All first these came movies out, came out limited release because they didn't have the audience in the theaters right now. You have Maze Runner, Jumanji, The Greatest Showman, Hostels, which I'm surprised they didn't get any nominations. I don't know what Hostels is. That's the Christian Bale uh, western. Oh, see, Twelve Strong, The Post, Panamavat, Hindi and English subtitles. The Shape of Water, Darkest Hour, Three Billboards, Calling By Your Name, Den of Thieves, Forever My Girl, Get Out, 
It's back in theaters again. Yeah, because it's nominated. The they Commuter. Do, these movies only come back Star in the Wars theater. Star Wars in theaters. That's surprising. They only come back in the theater Paddington when they're nominated. Two. Who needs that? Insidious. Who needs that? Ferdinand. Who needs that in a theater? So they they're making money. could have killed at least two or three theaters. You just listed a lot of the movies that are nominated. Well, I know. Now they are. Because they're nominated. The, the movies only go back into the theater like this because they're nominated. If they oh. weren't nominated, guess what? They wouldn't be in the theater. And they like a lot of these come out um, limited well, release. Like, like, what theaters need to start doing, and I've had this thought for a while now. Oh, boy. Here we go. What if they start doubling up theaters? What? Like, instead of just playing one movie in a theater all day. I mean, they're all digital f- files now. Couldn't you have two digital files in one theater? Like, play... They're not going to do that because they'd make less money for the movie. And then when you have a company like Disney but saying, movies, this no, movie has about, to take this spot for I'm not talking weeks. about those movies. I'm talking about, like, these movies, like the Itanias and the... Those kind of movies. But then if they're conflicting studios, you're going to have a pissing match. My movie only played four times this day. How come their movie's playing five times this day? That's probably what it comes down to. And smaller theaters might... I've seen splits where you have a movie playing in the afternoon in one theater, and it would be pl- a different movie playing at night. In the Enfield Theater, you would yeah. see the marquee in front of a door where it had a slash, and you would see the two movies... So they do do that yeah. in the smaller theaters. They do. There's a lot of things we don't know, unknowns. Well, get out and watch those movies. Prove Brian wrong. Prove me wrong about what? That people like movies in theaters that aren't superhero movies. I've been saying that all along. I don't know what Brian's talking about. Hatred of all things Disney. I don't hate all things Disney. You do. You have a hatred towards the mouse. You don't listen. I, I say, do listen. I just don't care. I say I don't like their bullying tactics. I don't think what they're doing is good for the business. And then you've not watched any movies ever. Because that's What's what watching a movie? Big, what's what all big movie studios have done for the length of time? Not always. Not like this. What are you talking about? Movie theaters back in the day used to own act, like own actors. Like, you could only act for this one movie theater, like one yeah, movie Yeah, you have a contract. That's pretty normal to this day. You have someone who signs a seven-movie deal with Sony or an eight-movie deal with Warner Brothers. That's so – that happens right now. That's, well, they like had their What's careers. that have to do with anything? Yeah. That, what's what's they that also, have to do with what I'm talking about? I think they also back then would push movies onto movie theaters. But, but back then, those movie theaters would own the movies. You would have the you know you would have a theater that would just play movies from their their um their place because they would own it. Yeah. But now you have multiplexes, and well, see, that was the it's thing. a if lot you different. Were trying to put on a movie and you didn't own that movie theater, you couldn't get in there. And did you know movie theaters were made originally because it was the only place that had air conditioning? Yes. And. People can escape the heat, and they would go to a theater mm-hmm. to watch a movie because it had air conditioning. And then they turned them into spank of divisions, and then you could sit there and spank it out. What? I, 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 I don't know, man. I'm out of here. All right. <laughs> let's go. See you all next week, everybody. Yeah. Well, I